Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's tutorial, we are gonna be working on these Snuggle Buddies. I don't know if you guys remember me showing you these. <laughs> these are really fun and simple and a real good uh, stash buster. Gets rid of, you know, your all your, uh, not stash buster, scrap yarn. <laughs> really good scrap yarn. To, uh, a really good way to use up your scrap yarn. Now, there's a couple things I do want to talk about. I used two different kinds of stuffed animals. I did Beanie Babies and then about seven and a half to eight inch tall stuffed animals that I got I had gotten from Walmart whenever they had Easter stuffed animals going for like two dollars and eighty eight cents I think. And then I found some in my girls' old the trash bag of old toys that's in our garage. <laughs> So I found some of those. Now, after I work in all of these up, let me see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen of them. I think I've got them all. Yeah, there's fourteen. Now, after doing all these, there's a couple of things that I found that are worth a couple of points that I'm going to make that are a little that are worth pointing out. One of them, first of all. In my opinion, the best thing to do is get a stuffed animal that has a one solid color body. Like this uh, panda, was, his body was all white, right? But this cat, which we do in the tutorial today, is three colors, brown or uh, black, brown, and white. Which, if you're going to use the fabric tack or the glue, we'll talk about that in a minute, um, it's okay. But if you're going to sew these on... It's a bit of a pain in the butt when the body of the animal is different colors because you can see, like like if I was to use white thread to sew this on, you would see that through all of the brown and black. So it, in my personal opinion, I find it a little bit easier to use a stuff like this frog, use how he's all just one color. That works the best. Um, also... I probably would not have done this with Beanie Babies. I probably would have stuck with uh, the seven and a half, eight inch tall stuffed animals. Those work the best in my opinion. And uh, let's see, what else was I, what did I want to tell you guys? You can have so much fun playing around with the colors. So like this one, this panda bear is black and white, but he had this red bow. So I wanted to incorporate a little bit of the red. It looks orange, but I wanted to incorporate incorporate a little bit of the red the red you know that sticks out on him so i did that and now with the beanie babies i tried to stick it to ten, stick to working 10 rounds of our granny square and then our stuffed animals i did 12 rounds because i have one is it this one yeah so this one is the 12 rounds on this um beanie baby and it's a little big so that's when i decided to just stick with the nine rounds on the beanie babies but you can see how I played with the colors here. The um, husky has gray, white, and then sharp brown or blue eyes, which I don't know why they're not coming out. But uh, so with the bl blanket, I went with the blue, gray, and white. So there's that one. Now on this beaver one, he's mainly brown. <laughs> I love his teeth. He's mainly brown and... Uh, with black eyes. So I thought, well, I'll try the brown, dark brown with the black for his eyes. And I, I don't know. I just, I, this one I wasn't feeling. I love the stuffed animal. Not big on the um, block. But that's all right. So there's that one. And then here's the panda. And then the kitty. So this cat is three different color, right? The white, the black, and the brown. So I did the white brown and black for the block which this is adorable i love this one we do this one in the tutorial and now this one this is a bear that i found in my girls uh toy old toys he's white and then he has this huge black nose so i was like well i'm going black and white <laughs> and i think this one is adorable too so now we have this frog that i got at walmart and i wanted to keep him simple so i just stuck with green yellow and white and I should I could have used you know went off these colors 
but I didn't want it to be too Easter because I wanted to keep it, you know, just a frog. So I went with these. Now this one is another one I found in my girls' toys. Now he was an all white bear, but he has the red mouth. So I decided just to go red and white with that. I thought that was cute too. And then this bunny I found in the, my girls' stuff. He was blue with white feet and nose. He looks rough because I ran him through the washer and dryer and he didn't like it very much. <laughs> so I decided to go to use the pink off his nose with purple and white. And it looked great. So there's that one. And then I found this one at Goodwill for 69 cents. And he was just a stuffed, I'd call him a Rottweiler, with a little pink or she, with a little pink um, bandana. So I, I didn't want to use that pink. I want to, oh, I didn't even notice that. Is that a breast cancer awareness puppy? Dress barn. <laughs> I've never even seen that before. Anyway, you guys will have to let me know if this was a breast cancer dog. Oops. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I wanted the pink of, of her, her apron to pop, so I didn't want to use that in the, the the blanket part. So I just stuck with the black and brown. Here's that. This is probably one of my favorites. And then this one, I, I'm not that fond of. If I could have found a brown that would have matched this squirrel better, I think it would have looked better. But this one, I... Uh, I'm not as fond of the if the, I wish the browns would have matched. That's if that would have matched, I'd love this more. It's just I couldn't find a brown. So here's that one. And then I found this frog at Goodwill for 69 cents. And I had no idea that this was actually an Easter thing until I got it home and it had a little egg right here. <laughs> I didn't even see it. So I just went ahead and just used my seam rubber from my sewing machine and just popped that off there. But with this frog, I wanted to keep this one a little more simple and uh, just stick with two colors. So I just did the yellow and the green and then the big red line from his lips. That kind of, you know, pops out. So I didn't want to take away from that. So there's the frog. And this is another one of my favorites. It's this little pink pig. Is he not cute? This was at Walmart for $2.88. And I just, I wanted to go with, uh, I didn't want to do pink. I wanted to use pig colors. And I thought, well, light pink and dark pink look adorable. So I thought, well, we'll just go with that. And I, this has got to be one of my favorites. <laughs> it's cute. So here's that. And then I have this one. I found this unicorn of my girls' stuff. And with this one, I went off the white, the pink. And then on her uh, horn, she has a gray spiral. So I, I added that into the color of the little blanket portion. So there's that. And then the last one that we, this is the other one we do on camera, is this little goat that I got from Walmart 2 at Easter. Now this one had the white belly, but it had the um, blue and purple from its feet, just like that frog did. This frog. And I didn't use that, so I thought, well, this time I want to use it. So this, I went with the two colors of the feet and the ears and then the white of its belly. So there you go. All right. Now, since I showed you guys all this, let us go through. Uh, right now, go, go to the comments, and I want you guys to comment which one your favorite is. My absolute all-time favorite has to be the pig. I think this pig is just too cute. <laughs> Plus, its eyes are a little glittery, too. Okay. So, let's go over what you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need... A stuffed animal. You guys can use any stuffed animal you want. You could actually, I mean, if you wanted to, just use like a normal, what? How tall? Uh, how tall is like a normal stuffed animal? Probably 10 to 12, to a, 10 inches to a foot. You guys could do that big if you wanted to. I mean, you could go all out and have a blast with this. But uh, you're going to need a stuffed animal. Any, any size you want. Doesn't matter. I, however, I prefer the stuffed animals that are uh, about seven, seven and a half, eight inches tall. Usually, like the ones that are sitting. That way, you can get the like on this goat, the feet that sit up by itself. 
but you don't have to. Like this frog, this frog was actually laying on its belly like this. Okay, so get your stuffed animal. Now, get, get that, get your stuffed animal. And now I want to talk about what we're going to do or what you want to use to um, shut your stuffed animals and attach it to our blankets. There's two different ways. You can do my favorite, which I prefer, is needle and thread, where we just sew it shut, and I'd show you guys in the video how we do that. And then we sew it to the blanket, which doesn't, it doesn't, it, surprisingly, it doesn't take that long. It's just in and out, in and out, in and out, one way, in and out, in and out, in and out, the other way. If you got enough thread, go ahead and do it another time. Sew it, or I mean, knot off your ends, and then do the same thing, sewing it to your blanket. Or we can do... Where oh here it is. We can do these two options. Now this is fabric tack. Okay. This I got from Amazon. It's a little pricier and dry it this dries quite quick. Now this is liquid stitch from Walmart. This is cheaper. Um this can, I don't know if this can or not, but oh yeah, this is washable. This is washable, dryable. Um, this is a little bit safer. These are quick. These are quick and easy, whereas using your needle and thread is a little more, I don't want to say time consuming because it's not necessarily time consuming. It just takes a little bit longer. Um, so get your needle and thread or your glue, whichever you choose. If you do choose the needle and thread, definitely get yourself a thimble. They have these at Walmart. These come in handy. Now, along with these, while you're at Walmart, if you are doing the glue, a lot of times in the food parts, uh, food aisles at Walmart, they have these bag clips hanging. You can tell I've used mine a bunch. Hanging on the um, aisles. I, I want to say they're just a couple dollars. I don't remember how much they were, but I, these things are handy. I use them for all kinds of things, not just, you know, my snuggle buddies, but these come in handy for holding. I'm going to try to do this, like pretend the blanket's not there, but I need to hold the top of this pig so I can sew it or glue it, but it, it comes in perfect. You know, to hold these ends. These things are great. Get you some of these. Or you can use clothespins. Like I have been. I've been using some clothespins for these. This something. Or you know what else I've used? Hair clips. I've used these little hair clips I have to hold my ends. <laughs> Anything that can hold this either, you know, with your glue or hold it while you're sewing it. Okay, so there's that. Then we're going to need... So all of these are made with scrap pieces of Red Heart Super Saver. So any four-weight yarn is going to work fine with this. Um, I just preferred Super Saver because it's what I had scrap. So any, any four-weight yarn, obviously you're going to need some scissors. Now you're also going to need... A big pair of scissors. I have these from Walmart. The, you're going to need a big, sturdy, sharp pair of scissors to cut our stuffed animal in half. So, like, these aren't going to be doing it for me. <laughs> they could, it, I should rephrase that. They could do it. I'm just not going to. <laughs> okay, so we got that. Uh, six millimeter hook. I don't have one here. So, yes, a six millimeter hook. Yarn needle to weave in your ends, stuffed animal, clips to hold our stuffed animals after we cut them, scissors to cut them, and then scissors for your yarn or how, however you guys want to work it up. Needle and thread, if you prefer to sew, if you would rather glue, they get you some fabric tack or liquid stitch from Walmart. And uh, I think that's it, guys. All right. I'm ready to get started. Let's do this. Okay, so to get started on our snuggle buddies, 
I've got my three colors set out, scrap colors actually. I've got white, and these are just Red Heart Super Savers. I've got a, what is the color of this one? Light Jasmine is the purple, and the blue is light blue. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my white. And to get started, we're just gonna do a simple run-of-the-mill granny. Slip knot on our hook. We're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. I feel like I shouldn't have said that run in the mill granny because it's kind of not. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that, okay? All right. So we chain five. Now we're going to slip stitch right into our first. So we've got one, two, three, four, five the other way. The fifth one. And we slip stitch right into that. And now I like to get my finger in there and wiggle it around until the hole that, the ring I mean, I should say, that the um, slip stitching our chain into closed up until my fingers are in there. So right there's my ring. All right, now I'm going to chain one, and we are going to work three doubles into our ring. One, two, and three. Chain two, right back into that ring with three doubles. One, two, and three. And we're going to repeat that, chain two, until we have four chain twos. So right now we have two. My yarn stuck on my sleeve. Right now we have two. One, and we just worked one. So now we go back in with our three doubles. And... I uh, should have said this sooner, but don't forget to work over your tail so we can close that up. All right, there's three double, chain two. How many do we have? One, two, and three. We need four, so we start over our set with three doubles. One, two, and three. Chain two. How many do we have? One, two, three, and four. Perfect. Slip stitch to our first. Our first double, I'm going to go ahead and pull that tight, my tail tight, chain one, and now what we're going to do is turn, and we're going to slip stitch right into that chain two space that's right next to us, slip stitch in there, chain one, and now we're going to work a corner, which is three doubles, one, two, and three, chain two, we're just going to slide that first uh, set of three doubles over. And we're going to go right back into that chain two with three doubles. Two and three. So this first corner consists of three doubles, chain two, three doubles. Okay. And now to get to this next chain two space, we chain one and come straight into the next chain two with three doubles, chain two, three doubles. So there's two three, chain two, and three doubles right back in there. Okay, so to get to our next chain two space, we chain one, work three doubles into the chain two space, two and three, chain two, right back in there with our remaining three, one, two, and three, now to reach this one, we chain one and go right in there with three doubles, chain two, three doubles. Three, chain two, and three doubles. Okay, so now we chain one, slip stitch to that first double. And then we're going to chain one and fasten off. Unless you guys don't want to. This is completely up to you. However you want to work your blanket. Should I say blanket? The um, fabric portion of your snuggle buddy. <laughs> All right. So I finished that. Now, if you don't, if you didn't want to change color. So let's say you slip stitch to your first double, chain one, and then you turn. And all you're going to do is slip stitch right back into that nearest chain space. 
don't know what that was. <laughs> right, slip stitch right back into that nearest chain space. So, you know, work a chain or slip stitch, chain one, and then we're, move on. But now that we're going to change colors, I'm not going to weave in my tails right now either. Now that we're going to change colors, let's see, what color do I want to go to? Uh, I think I'm going to go to blue. All right, here is how we are going to change colors throughout our whole little pattern here. All right, get a slip knot on our hook. Okay, and here's the thing. With the last row of double crochets that we worked, excuse me, the last row that we worked, we want the double crochets facing us, okay? So I can see this row is facing us and this row is not. So if I turn it over to show you guys the difference, see this row is round, I should say, is facing us and then the round we just completed is backwards. We want the last round that we worked to face us, okay? And now into any chain two space, doesn't matter which one you go, we're gonna take our hook and go right into that chain two space and attach with a slip stitch. So I've got it on here and notice how my slip stitch, slip knot on my hook is not very tight. See how much room this got in there? That's what I want. I don't want it too tight, but I'm just gonna go straight in there, pull up a loop, pull the loop, Pull the loop I just pulled up through the one that was already on my hook. Okay, so there's my slip stitch. Now I'm just going to pull that tail tight, okay? So it's straight, it uh, tightened it up a little bit, and it's nice and pretty. Chain one, and now we turn. And now I'm going to work over my tail, too. Go right over that tail. So we're in that corner, so what does our corner get? Corner get three double crochets, chain two, three doubles. So I'm going to go right in there with one... two and three chain two I'm gonna go ahead and scooch that over just a little and three doubles still working over my tail one two and three I'm just gonna pull that tail just a little bit close all that up and now we chain one and into our chain one space, work three doubles. One, two, and three. Chain one. Give me some slack here. Okay. Chain one, and then into our chain two space, we work our corner. Three doubles. Two and three. Chain two. Right back in there with three doubles. One, two, and three. Chain one, and into our chain one space, we get three doubles. One, two, three, chain one. Work our corner into the next chain space. Chain two, and three doubles. All right, chain one, we're into that chain one space and I'm gonna go ahead and work over that tail and work three doubles, two and three, chain one into our chain two space of our corner, work our corner, chain two, finish our corner Chain one and into our chain space, we work three doubles. One, two, and three. Chain one, and we're back to beginning, and we slip stitch to our first. So the, our first double crochet is a little wonky right there, but that's all right. We're gonna go right in there, work our slip stitch, chain one, and we turn. So the, what we're doing right now is pretty much just repeating round three. Slip, stu slip stitch to our first, chain one, turn, slip stitch into our chain space, chain one, 
And what does our chain one spaces get? Three doubles. One, two, and three. Chain one. There's another chain one space. So we put three doubles. Chain one. We're to our corner. So our corner gets our corner, which is three doubles. Chain two. Three doubles. Chain one. And basically what we're going to do is each chain one space gets three doubles. Each chain two space of our corner gets our corner. Three doubles, chain two, three doubles. So repeat all the way around and I will meet you guys when we get to the beginning. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I'm coming around. Don't forget to work your chain one after your set or your corner and your sets. And we're gonna slip stitch to our first double. Chain one, pull up a loop and fasten off. All right, so that is what you guys are gonna repeat. Attach into any chain two with the slip stitch or however you guys prefer to do it. Chain one, well, um, let me start that over. Make sure the last row that you just worked, the double crochets are facing you. Then attach with a slip stitch or however you choose, chain one, turn, and then work your round. Slip stitch to the first, chain one, turn, slip stitch into the next chain space, and then, you know, work from there. Now, the way I worked my little, I'm going to call them just little blanket pieces. I don't know what you, what they're technically called, but the little blanket pieces, I've been working them um, two color, two row rounds of each color so two of white two of blue two of purple two of white two of blue two of purple and so on now like i said at the beginning the i worked the blanket sizes of the snuggle buddies that were gonna be um beanie babies nine rounds so two or i'm sorry ten two four six eight ten and then the ones that were you know the seven and a half to eight inch stuffed animals like the ones i got from walmart i worked 12 rounds because i i don't in my opinion i thought the ones that had the beanie babies on it that were 12 rounds kind of it just looked funny so i i kept it to nine rounds for the ones with beanie babies and then the ones with the seven and a half to eight inch stuffed animal 12 rounds so all I do is just work the two rounds of each color, fasten off, attach new color, and work from there. And now you don't have to do that. You guys can do it however you want to do it. I'm just, you know, I'm just showing you how I did it. So having said that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish my 12 round square or block, whichever. And um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do from there. And I'm, I'm also going to have all my ends weaved in when I come back, just so it's nice and pretty and ready for you guys. Um, okay, I'm going to finish my block and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back and I've got my uh, block done. Piece of fuzz here. So I have two white, two blue, two purple, two white, two blue, two purple. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So I'm going to set these to the side. I've got my other one here. I'm going to set these to the side and we're going to work on cutting our animal. So... Let me back my camera up a little. Okay. So we're going to need our sharp scissors. I'm going to go ahead and just cut this tag off. Okay. The very first thing I want to do is I want to get in here and I want to start, like I'm taking my fingers and I'm, I'm going like this right on its belly like this and what I'm doing is I'm separating the the cotton or the polyfill the stuffing that's inside of this I'm just separating it I'm trying to go as evenly across its belly as I can if you don't get it perfect it's not that big of a deal so I'm just getting that separated <laughs> it looks like I'm just flopping this around but I'm not <laughs> okay I think I've got it. This one, this uh, little stuffed animal is pretty 
fully stuffed. So I'm gonna end, I'm probably gonna end up having to pull some of this out, but that's all right. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it a little bit where I've got my belly started and I'm just cutting straight across. There's that. <laughs> so, and also you are gonna lose some fur with this, but that's all right. So first thing I can already tell is I'm gonna need to pull some of this stuffing out. I'm just going to pull a little bit out. The rest, I'm now his legs are pretty, pretty well stuffed. So I'm going to try to stuff it down a little bit more. I think I still need to pull some out. All right. What I, the goal, my end goal of what I'm trying to do here. Okay is I want to be able to bring my two pieces that I cut together, but also have it, it's gonna, I need it to fold in a little bit on each side. So if I take here and kind of poke that in a little bit, and then it gives me a nice pretty edge right here. Okay. So I think I might pull a little more out still. Okay, I like the way that is. So I'm going to set this to the side. Put this in your polyfill bag if you have any. That's what I use. All right. Now I'm going to take my bag of clips here. Now all I'm doing is just pulling those out so I can just... I'm, I'm going to start in the center lay that over a little bit and bring it together and I'm just gonna pinch it right there all right so I'm gonna set that one to the side now for his top half I'm gonna do the same thing which I can tell his little arms and his head are pretty well stuffed so I'm just gonna pull this out Usually, the stuffed animals that I have been doing in the uh, the picture you guys saw, they were not nearly this well stuffed. Get that in his head. Alright, that's good. So I'm going to fold this over right here and right straight across. And I'm just going to hold it together until I'm ready to start sewing on that. And do keep in mind when you stuff some of the stuffing, oops, pop that right off. When you stuff some of the, his stuffing inside of his head, it does tend to misshape his head. Oh, I just broke it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first way, which is the way that I like to do the Beanie Babies, the ends right here, is for fabric tack or liquid stitch. They have this at Walmart and this, the liquid stitch is cheaper than the fabric tack, but this is really quick and this takes a few minutes. So I'm going to show you two ways. We're going to sew one end of, of our goat or my goat. And we're going to glue one end. And I'm going to glue his top. Actually, no, I take that back. I'm going to glue his bottom. Okay. So what we're going to do is still, I want to try to make sure that these... Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you what I, I'm trying to avoid. I don't want to just take this flat piece and this flat piece and stick it together and then glue it shut because it doesn't leave a very pretty edge up here especially if you have something that's not long haired like how this is a short haired if I didn't bend you know fold that over just a little bit and then push it together it would have been a straight uh, rough edge right here and it doesn't look very pretty so all I'm doing is getting my edges together starting in the center 
and I'm going to pinch this right here. And I'm going to do the same thing. See how that little edge right there is sticking out? I'm just going to tuck it in just a tad. Give it a little tug like that, and it'll the other sides will just fold right in with it. And then just take one of our clips, and I'm going to clip it right there. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. See how it's sticking out? I'm just going to slightly tuck it in a little bit. Fold. And push that together. These clothespins really work great for when, when you're gluing, but this one, I think... It may have accidentally gotten glued shut, so it broke. There. There we go. So this is what we're looking for. Now I'm going to go ahead and just work with the fabric tack on this. Turn this over. Wait for the glue to get to the bottom. All right. So I'm going to, still keeping this folded, get back in there, I'm going to start here and just squeeze it in and go along the edge, bring it together, and put my clothespin back on there. And now I'm just going to continue this down the side. Get in there. Get in there. And now to finish it off down this side, make sure my ends are still tucked. kind of came out a little bit, but that's all right. Take my bag clip and clip. And that's done. That's how simple the gluing part is. So now all I'm going to do is set this to the side and let this dry. Okay, now we're going to start on the sewing part, which, you know, I mean, it's pretty simple. If, well, I should say, if you know about sewing, if you are hand sewing anyway, if you don't, then I guess it, it could be a little tougher. So I've got here my needle and some thread. All right. So basically what I want, I've got glue all over my fingers. <laughs> basically what I want is enough thread to be able to sew across one side and come back across. So my piece of thread is probably, which I know is gonna to be too much, but I'm okay with that. I'm knitting, or I'm knitting, <laughs> I'm knotting. Oops, I'm knotting off the bottom. Which basically all I'm doing is I'm just holding the knot I made with my two ends, and then I'm slowly pull, well, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Make a knot, and I'm holding the knot that I want all of my other knots to stop on. There we go. Hold that, and then with my other fingers, I'm pulling it tight onto it. I'm going to do that a few times. So basically what I did was pulled out like a four foot piece, ran, oops, I about lost that, ran one end of the thread through my needle, brought both of the ends together like this. So I ran one end through, pulled it and pulled it until both my ends came together tied a knot and that's what I'm doing right now is finish and tying this knot a little tighter. Where'd it go? Oh. All right. So I'm going to call that good. 
And now, here's a funny part. When you're hand sewing things, I got a long tail I'm going to cut off here. And you've got a long piece of thread like this. It tends to want to bunch up. So what I'm going to do, it's a little trick I've seen, is I'm going to take some chapstick and I just set my thread on my chapstick, hold it on there with my finger, and then run the thread through my chapstick. And that somewhat helps keep it from uh, knotting up. You'll have to redo it a couple times, but that's all right. Okay, so to get started on the sewing part, fluff is f everywhere. <laughs> all right, we're gonna do the same concept. I want this to stay bent, and this part, you're gonna have to hold that together when we get to the middle. But you see how it's folded over? That's perfect, that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna fold over this corner and make, fold over this corner and bring them together. And I am just going to start sewing it. Now with the sewing, I am not um, going over and out, over and out. I'm going back and forth, back and forth. And the reason for that is because I don't want you to be able to see the stitches through the fur. And I just did what I said I wasn't going to do. Oops. Pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> okay, so now it's just easy sailing. Just going in. And out. Now, you guys are probably thinking, you know, it looks like, how are you going to be able to see how far, the distance between your last and first stitch? Well... It's not easy when it's furry. So what we're going to do is come back across. I mean, I'm not a perfect hand sewer. Oh, is that what you call it? Hand sewer? I don't know. Person that sews with their hands and not a machine. So what I'm going to do, make sure this is still folded over. is go back so like I'm coming this way and then when I get here I'm going to turn around and come back and if I have enough I'll turn around and come back to make sure it's nice and fully sewn shut just about try to make sure this stays shut right there Oops, I got stuck on his horn and I poked myself. All right, make sure you're both in the white and the gray. I don't think I went through. Ooh, I poked my finger again. Dang it, that <laughs> That hurts. I'm trying my hardest not to cuss. All right, so I just worked to this corner. Now he's shut, right? See, he's all shut. Not very pretty, but he's still shut. Now I'm just going to go back. Making sure I'm going into both the white and the gray. And the good thing about ha working this with a stuffed animal that's got longer fur is you can't see. I am actually going to do something right there because it popped out and I don't like that. Okay. Um, you can't see your stitches through the fur, which I'm thankful for. But if you're working, if you're doing this with the... Uh, like the Beanie Baby ones, I would highly recommend getting one. If you guys haven't noticed, talking and doing this at the same time is a little 
of a struggle. <laughs> I would highly recommend getting a Beanie Baby that is one solid color on its belly. But like mine is three different colors. So that's why I glued it. But if I was sewing this, you'd be able to see the white thread I have through this... Hello. Through this brown and black. Which I don't, I don't like, but... I mean, it's to each their own. Um, you learn a lot after you've worked a couple of these like I have. I would honestly say, in my opinion, the best thing to do... What is the dealio here? The best thing to do is to get a uh, solid color stuffed animal. Whether it's a Beanie Baby or an actual stuffed animal. Okay, so I did make it all the way back across. And I'm just going to go ahead... I think it's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to knot it off with my other end. So I'm going to snip here. And I'm just going to tie this in a bunch of knots. Um, yeah, definitely just stick with a solid a solid body. Oh, it just broke. A solid colored body stuffed animal. Okay, so I, I have plenty of thread left on here, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this here. You guys may want to reload it, reload your needle. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how we are going to attach our body parts here. This one's not quite dry yet, so we're going to wait on this one. To our blanket piece, or our block square, whatever you want to call it. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to make sure round one is facing me which right now it's not so I'm gonna flip this over now it's facing me and what I'm gonna do in one corner I'm gonna attach the uh, the head like this so I'm gonna lay the head here kind of lay it forward and I'm gonna bring over and sew this to the blanket okay so when the blankets laying down this is what you're gonna see Oh, excuse me. And then on the feet are going to be different. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the head. Hold that for me. <laughs> I'm going to re-knot this. Okay, so take my needle here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it across four blocks. See the four blocks I have right here? And I'm just going to lay that there. And I'm going to come in right on the corner I've got right there and just start going back and forth. Sorry, I bumped the camera. So I came in. Now I'm going to come back this way and like I said since this stuffed animal has that longer fur oops I didn't mean for that to happen you are not going to be able to see the stitches through the uh, fur so I'm going to come right across here and um, I am going to go ahead and do the little cat beanie baby that I have all ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I use the fabric tack to attach that to the block because the bottom of this goat isn't ready yet. It takes a few minutes to let that dry. Honestly, I'd let it set for a couple hours just to be 100% sure it's fully dried. I'm pulling this pretty tight because I want to make sure it's nice and tight and I'm, <laughs> I'm worried that oh, the thread is going to snap. It just did. Son of a... Okay. I've got one good piece I'm going to just keep working with. I'll fix it. And at some points, the um, material, you know, you're going through the two layers of the stuffed animal, the one layer of the... Of the uh, 
uh, polyfill, can't get my words out, and then, you know, you're going through the block, so a thimble does come in helpful, come in handy for this, if you need it. And if you guys want to, you're more than welcome to do both. Yes, right there, it's kind of tough. To, um, to sew it on and glue this, you know, just to, you know, secure the fact this isn't going to come off. Ouch. I wonder if, it makes me wonder if, I'm just making sure I'm on the four blocks that I showed you guys. I'm just wondering if you guys laugh whenever I poke myself. Whenever we were growing up, my grandma, she was a quilter, and she quilted by hand, and she'd be setting at that, and I, so I just made it all the way back, and I'm just going to go right back across. Um, she would sit there for hours at those old table, the like quilt rack table things, and she'd just be in and out, in and out. Well, me and my sister would sit underneath and kind of try to predict where she was going to go. <laughs> Man, would she get mad at us. Well, as kids, we didn't. We were like, we're just playing. And then, you know, as adults, it's like, well, duh, she was mad. She was going to jab us. That's why she would always, you know, get on us, get out from underneath there. <laughs> that's what it makes. That's what it goes through my mind every time I jab myself with a needle. So on one hand, it's like, oh, man, that kind of hurt. But on the other hand, it's like, oh, I remember when Grandma used to get mad at us. <laughs> okay. Anyway. I've made it back to the beginning. That's... Where's my... That is just some stuff we can get rid of. Scrap. I'm going to cut. And now I'm going to tie knots with this. Oh, what is the deal with this thread? All right. So there is the top. So this is what it's looking like so far. Ta-da. All right. Now for the bottom, I am done with, I am. If you guys continue to sew, you obviously aren't, but I am done with my needle and thread right now, so I'm going to, let's see, let's just, I think it's dry enough. I think it is. I think it's dry enough. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we are going to need these clips. So I'm going to get three of them out for me. All right. So now what we're going to do to attach our bottom half, we are going to lay our piece out. See, my head is up and my pe my stitch, my first row of double crochets are up. So I'm going to push this up a little bit and I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it like this. So I want my butt, the butt up and the feet facing the head. Does that make sense? See how the, there. See how the feet are facing the head? That's what I want. And I am gonna just show a little demonstration of why we want that. So right now, I think I should have pulled more stuffing out of this. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold this on for just a second because I wanna show you why we're doing it this direction. So whenever the little, I about said little person. So whenever the child is holding it and you know, it's hanging like that. The feet are going to hold like this while the head is like this. So they're both facing the same way. Okay, back to what we're doing. All right, so I'm still going to try to go across my four blocks. It may not be possible because the bottom is a little longer, but I can bunch it up a little. I almost... I am going to pause this for a second, guys, because I'm going to maneuver a bunch of this uh, polyfill. I should have pulled more out. I think it might be all right. I think it's going to be all right. 
I can do this. All right, so I'm going to do it across my four blocks right there. And I'm going to get my fabric tuck. Right now I'm just waiting for all the glue to get to the bottom. And I'm going to run it across the four double, the four blocks right here. I'm going to run a, a line across there. Okay. Now I'm going to take the flat edge of my piece and lay it on there at the beginning. Squish it in there. And now I'm going to use my clips to hold it together. All right. Okay, so I am going to let this dry and I'm looking to make sure it's on there. Oop, I just stuck my finger in it. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and put one here in the middle. Because I want it to be nice and tight on there. So, with that being done, I am going to go ahead and do my other little one I got here. My Beanie Baby one. So, I'm looking to make sure my stitches are up and they're not. So, I'm flip that over. Now they are. So, I'm going to go ahead and start at the bottom. And I'm going to glue this bottom to the four right here, my four blocks. This fabric tack takes forever to get to the bottom. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just gonna run all the way across these four. Take this, I'm gonna set it right on the bead I made. Get me some of my clips. I have one of these old clothesline pins. Okay, hold that there. Now I'm going to come to the head. And the head, I'm just going to lay like that. Butt up, feet to the head. Alright, now I'm going to do a bead across these four. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to take my head. You can really see it a lot better with this Beanie Baby, what I was trying to show you guys. With that stuffed animal and all the fur, it's a little hard to see what I'm trying to show you. <laughs> so I'm just going to hold here. And here. There we go. Now all we do is just let it dry, which with this fabric tack, it's going to take a little bit only because, because, uh, I want to make sure it's fully dried before I start messing with it and, you know, all that fun stuff. So I'm going to pause my video and I will be back. I'd say a good hour, hour and a half, just cause I want to make sure this is fully dried and ready to go. So I'll be back after a while. Okay, guys, I'm back. I let them dry for about an hour, hour and a half, and they're good. So here's our kitty. Here's our goat. I think these things are adorable. Like, in my mind, I could see, a, a, you know, a little baby holding them like this, or this being over their shoulder and this being on their chest. I don't know. <laughs> That's just how I see it in my mind. Anyhow, guys, I <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. I want to thank each and every one of you for allowing me in your home, on your phone, on your laptops, your tablets, however you guys are watching me. I appreciate it. And uh, I thank you guys for taking time out of your day to watch one of my <laughs> goofy little tutorials. Oops, sorry about that. Um, I truly appreci appreciate it, and I thank you guys. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, please and thank you. Uh, click that bell, and then after you click the bell, then click all, so you get a notification for whatever I do on YouTube. And then hit that thumbs up button. That, that really, really helps me out. Hit that thumbs up. 
And uh, check out my description box. I've got links to my Facebook group, Instagram, Twitter, and Etsy where I have hundreds of patterns, hats, buttons, keychains, tumblers, dolls, all kinds of stuff for sale. So you can go check all that out. And uh, leave me a comment. I love reading your guys' comments. Let me know what you guys think of these, my little snuggle buddies I created. <laughs> okay, guys, that is it for me. And uh, thank you all again so very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.